Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey. Alright, so Apple has finally unveiled their mixed reality device. This has been rumored for years and years by this point. How's the software going in the mixed reality headset? I don't know anything about what you're talking about. For the past few weeks, my Twitter feed has been filled with tons of messages saying that when this happens, it's going to change everything. So here, let's watch the announcement and I'll give you my thoughts. Introducing Apple Vision Pro. The era of spatial computing is here. That's a really interesting line. The area of spatial computing is here. So apparently they're doing the exact same thing that I was seeing on my Twitter feed. As soon as Apple launches something, now AR is actually a thing. As always, these showcase, you always got to take away the marketing from the reality. So spatial computing has obviously been a thing for quite some time. There's been Magic Leap, there was HoloLens, there was the MetaQuest Pro, Tilt 5, all kinds of things that already work with augmented reality. But still, let's keep watching. When you put on Apple Vision Pro, you see your world and everything in it. Your favorite apps live right in front of you. So as soon as I watch this, my first question is obviously about the actual resolution of the color pass-through. It is great that the pass-through is in color and it is supposedly very high resolution, but obviously over here we are seeing a render, so this is not the actual reality. So that to me is one of the big questions, which is just how much fidelity does this pass-through actually have? When you take it off and put it on, do you actually notice a significant difference or not? In theory, I believe the headset actually has quite a lot of pixels, so hopefully that should be good. I assume the cameras are going to be pretty good considering the price, so let's see. This is Vision OS, Apple's first ever spatial operating system. It's familiar, yet groundbreaking. You navigate with your eyes. Now this is the part that is really cool. Being able to use the eyes essentially as a cursor, that one is really awesome. That does have a drawback, which I'm going to mention in a little bit about the controllers, but at least in terms of concept, being able to control things just by looking at it, that is really cool. That's definitely something that I hope will become more and more common in mixed reality, virtual reality, and so on, as these new headsets all start to have cameras pointing at the eyes. Simply tap to select, flick to scroll, and use your voice to dictate. Okay, so tap to select, flick to scroll, and use voice to actually write things. On the one hand, those all definitely sound like very intuitive input devices. But on the other hand, my one big concern with this is, so suddenly we have a new entry in this space that is using a completely different input method from all the others. So my question, especially talking as a developer, okay, so what is going to happen with all of the interaction toolkits? For example, Unity's XRI toolkit. I haven't used that one yet myself, but I assume that one has a bunch of abstraction layers in order to abstract away what specific control you're using. I assume that has to be done in order to make it work with all of the various devices that exist. So now that we have one that uses a completely different input method, I wonder how that's going to be. Suddenly, I assume that's going to actually break everything that exists, and you're pretty much going to be forced to make one version that works for pretty much every single headset, and another version that works solely for Apple. So the input does seem extremely intuitive, but the concerns as a developer, those seem quite bad. And of course, when it comes to writing text using voice, for me personally, I never liked that. I find that all of these tools to convert speech into text those pretty much only work if you're using perfect English. So for me, in my case, with my strange accent, it usually does not pick up exactly what I want to say. So in theory, using voice to type, that is good, but in reality, I'm not very confident about it. It's like magic. I do agree that it's definitely like magic. Being able to just look with your eyes, flick your fingers to do things, that does sound really awesome. It sounds like a really great input method. So just speaking specifically about just this one device, yep, that seems great. Hey. Foundational to Apple Vision Pro is that you're not isolated from other people. When someone else is in the room, you can see them and they can see you. Okay, so when I saw this part in the original announcement, you could actually see the eyes, but right now, maybe I'm blind or there's an issue with this video, but I'm not seeing the eyes, but anyways. So that, that feature does seem quite useful. Or at least that's one of the main concerns about VR is people say that you'll look way too stupid. So I wonder, does adding eyes help or not? Personally, I feel like simply taking off the headset, that would be much, much easier. But I guess some people might like this one. Honestly, when it comes to the external display, for me, the main thing is being able to actually mod it. That's the one thing that I do find quite interesting. Something that I thought about and I actually posted on Twitter was the character Wrench from Watch Dogs 2. That character is constantly holding a headset that plays all kinds of interesting sprites. So maybe this is actually going to be the future. So maybe in the future, people will have all kinds of headsets like this, and they'll be able to do all kinds of sprites to make them look unique, something. So I could see that as a pretty decent use case, but again, just as a toy. So in reality, I don't think it changes way too much. 
Apple Vision Pro is Apple's first ever 3D camera. Now this is one part that a lot of people were making fun on Twitter, but honestly, I don't really get it. I mean, I, I do get that it looks quite silly having something staring at your kids. <laughs> it does seem a bit strange. But on the other hand, I really don't think it's any different from holding a small rectangle, like a mobile phone, holding a camera. I really don't see how it's much different from that. So I do agree that it does sound silly, very strange, but in reality, I don't think that's much of a, a negative, really. I guess if you were constantly using it, it would look quite a little bit dystopian. But I'm envisioning you put it on, you record a nice video of your kids, you take it out and you go do normal stuff. So it sounds silly, but personally, I don't think it's much to worry about. Apple Vision Pro brings the scale and wonder of a movie theater to whatever space you're in. And you can make the screen as big as you want. Yeah, so playing videos, yeah, that sounds great. But again, something that already exists on pretty much every headset. It's definitely an interesting use case for the tech. But the one big drawback is if you have a big TV in front of you, then multiple people can watch it. Whereas if you're using this device, then pretty much every single person needs to have one, which at the current cost, that is actually quite expensive. Vision Pro is a wonderful way to play your favorite games. Curry against Smart. Just connect your controller. So it's interesting that they're using a PS5 controller. Usually on things other than pretty much Sony ads, usually the Xbox controller is the one that is used. So that's definitely an interesting choice. And play on a massive screen with incredible audio. And the other obvious thing to note is, okay, so this is playing flat games. It is a mixed reality device, so it does both AR and VR. However, they don't really talk about VR gaming that much. I wonder if that's actually a conscious decision to do that, or if that's simply the fact that Meta pretty much bought out every single VR studio, so they don't really have all kinds of VR content. For example, Beat Saber is pretty much the best VR game of all time, but it's owned by Meta, so it will definitely not be on this device. Apple Vision Pro, you can create the perfect workspace, no matter where you are. Your favorite apps from Apple and the App Store are there. You can arrange them however you like and work seamlessly across them. Being able to actually set up a virtual desktop, I do think that is an interesting use case for this tech, again, especially before the price. But would you actually use this as your primary device? I can see this being super useful if you're someone who is constantly traveling around so you never have a fixed desktop to play with. But if you're always at home, would this ever become a primary device? This is one of those things where it sounds interesting in theory, but in reality, I think just having multiple monitors, that is so much easier. So personally, I'm not too sold on this vision, except of course, if I were to fly a lot, if I was constantly on the road, then yep, I could see this being very useful. And even connect your Mac simply by looking at it. Turning a 13 inch screen into- Again, yet another similar thing. And this is quite interesting. Once again, super useful if you're constantly out on the road and you only have a small 15 inch laptop. If so, I could see this being quite useful to have a much bigger screen. But once again, my one question that always comes up with anything related to Apple is, okay, so does this work on other things? For me, I work on Windows. I don't have any Mac. So would this actually work paired with a Windows device? That's a good question. Like on a plane. Yeah, so on a plane, I do see this being quite useful. Once again, if I flew a lot, this would be very great. And a high performance battery reduces weight to a minimum and slips easily into your pocket. So the battery is another really interesting thing. Previously, they mentioned how you could use this to watch movies, but the battery only lasts for about two hours. And as far as I know, nowadays, most movies are over two hours. So that's another example of how it seems like the vision is a bit ahead of the tech. To convincingly place content in your space took thousands of groundbreaking innovations and custom technologies. Since your eyes see the world with incredible resolution, we built a micro OLED display system that fits 64 pixels in the same amount of space as a single iPhone pixel. The resolution does seem quite impressive. From some numbers that I saw, I believe it's supposed to be like 3400 by 3400. So that is quite a lot of pixels. So in theory, the screen should be really good more than a 4K TV for each eye, giving you jaw-dropping, lifelike clarity. To power a spatial computer like Apple Vision Pro required an innovative dual-chip design. Now that's a really interesting thing. I don't think any other, even the MetaQuest Pro, I don't think it's using multiple chips. So I wonder if this is responsible for the super huge price tag, having to build two chips instead of just one. The results do seem impressive, but is it worth the cost? I'm not sure. M2 provides phenomenal performance 
and a brand new chip, R1, processes sensor data at incredible speed, virtually eliminating lag. The era of spatial computing is here. This is Apple Vision Pro. Now that's interesting. So on the official trailer that they separated from the keynote, on this one there is no mention of price or anything, so I don't know, I think that's fun. Basically it costs 3500 bucks, which is quite a lot. The tech does seem extremely impressive, but the cost is definitely high up there. So based on this, I would say those people said Apple is going to pretty much blow XR and everything is going to change. Based on that price point, I don't think so. But in terms of tech, it does seem extremely good. It does seem like they push the tech to the absolute limits, regardless of price. And I guess we shall see if that strategy is going to work or not. And yeah, it'll be really fun to try out and experience it the first time. Can't imagine I'd buy one and use it a lot though. Yeah, I would say that's pretty much the exact same thing for me. The tech looks really exciting, really interesting. So based on the tech, I definitely would love to try it out. But at that cost, 3500 bucks, that is quite a lot of money. So even if I could technically justify it as a business expense if I were to make a video on it, even with that, that is still way too much that I am willing to spend. Either way, it's only coming out next year, so no point in worrying about that right now. Basically, to answer the question in the title, so did Apple change everything related to XR? I don't think so, simply because of the price point. People were saying this is going to be the moment where XR is going to become mainstream, but obviously at this price point, you can't possibly do that. So, really exciting tech, definitely targeted for more developers to build all tons of apps, and who knows, perhaps the next iteration will really hit it big. Either way, definitely exciting to see how much the tech is progressing. Alright, I hope you found it interesting to hear my thoughts on this topic. Let me know if you'd like to see some more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.